going guys we're about to go live with cal poly fraternity and sorority life and hopefully uh address some questions that you guys might have how's it going hi how are you doing well yeah um can multiple people join this slide pardon me i think the connection broke up for a second there oh i was just wondering if um because our other uh, the two students are separately, are they going to be able to join it as well? Yes, they just sent me a request. Yeah, they should just be able to send me a request just like you did. Okay, I'll text them right now. I think so we're just having them join how many members are we doing just two so it's the, the IFC president and then the USFC president so Shay and Megan and I don't know if they're going to come from the IFC awesome. account or oh Megan said she requested Yeah, I can view them here. Oh, perfect. And then the other one should be from the IFC account. Got Hi, it. Megan. I see right <laughs> Sorry for getting started like you guys. No worries. All right. We're all being huh? All right. So do you guys want to start with some basic intros? Uh, name, pronouns, major, hometown, maybe? Yeah, I think some role models. Yeah. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Elizabeth Ayala Picola. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm actually the assistant director for fraternity and sorority life here, so I'm not a student. Um, and I am representing Canalina Council today. And any general questions? Hey, hi. Uh, hi. Let's call it Jimmy. Sweet. Thanks for introducing yourselves, guys, and kicking it off. Um, I'm Shay Friedman. I'm the IFC president. Uh, I'm a rising senior studying political science. I'm originally from the East Coast. So if there's anyone tuning in from the East, um, you know, big shout out to all my East Coasters. So I'm excited to talk to you guys. All right. And I am Dane Mueller. I'm a Welcome Center employee. And normally Erin does the Mustang Mondays, but uh, she was excited to spend some time with her friend on her birthday. So I was glad to fill in for her so i'd love to hear some more about fsl yeah do you have any specific questions for us or i can go into my general spiel to kick it off can you hear me sorry i can hear you now Okay, awesome. Um, well, I'll kick it off. I don't know where Shay went, but maybe he'll re request to rejoin. Um, but I'll just give a general overview. So we have 38 fraternities and um, fraternities and sororities here at Cal Poly. These are our social fraternities. Um, and we make up about 18% of the student population here at Cal Poly. Um, and they're separated into three councils, so I'll have each of us share a little bit about each council. Um, the Panhellenic Council, this houses our large national all-women's organizations, um, and we have 10 Panhellenic sororities. Um, and then I'll let Megan and Shay explain the other three, two councils. Yeah, so for USFC, as uh, the Council, we oversee our culture organizations on campus, both work and Is that all you got, Megan? Yeah, I said. 
Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm having some trouble with the service. I could not hear you at all. Um, so yeah, the ISC, um, the Inter Charity Council, acts as the governing body for our 18. IFC recruitment fosters uh, year-round efforts to reach PNMs um, and help them you know, enrich their experience at Cal Poly and within the SLO community at large. Um, the IFC strives to provide guidance, leadership development, encouragement, and opportunities for both personal and collective growth. Um, and the recruitment process is the time to get involved, um, to start off at least. Um, our IFC Rush Week is October uh, 5th through the 11th. Um, our mandatory information session is October 2nd, um, and the IFC Council Service event that's open to PMMs is October 3rd. Um, lastly, we have our annual barbecue um, on Dexter Lawn. It's the Recruitment Week kickoff barbecue, and that is October 4th. Um, all those details are available on greeklife.calpoly.edu um, backslash IFC backslash recruitment. Um, really excited to get to meet you guys. All right, so do you want to explain a little bit about how the rush process runs? Yes. Shay, do you want to go first? Yeah, sure. Um, so we have our IFC Rush Week where um, you can go out and meet every chapter on campus. Um, I personally am a big fan of our uh, recruitment week kickoff barbecue. I think that's a really cool experience. Um, it's where you have all chapters on campus um, out on Dexter Lawn um, with boots. Um, it's the traditional, I guess, rush day that a lot of people think of. Um, you can go out and, you know, there's food being served, um, meet with every chapter. Uh, I would highly recommend talking to every single chapter on campus, um, as many people as you can. Um, and then throughout the week, um, events will be open to all PNMs, and then eventually chapters will invite people um, back. Um, and basically by the end of rush, everyone will have found a uh, good fit for them um throughout all 18 of our chapters and i'm confident that there's a place for everyone um throughout all of our 18 chapters well uh, i'm glad to hear it that sounds like fun i remember when i rushed back in the day it was pretty fun does it look the yeah. same for both uh fraternities and sororities and all other greek associations no definitely not i'll let uh, e and megan take that away yeah megan you can go first okay um, so it's very different for USFC to rush. So for us, our events are just two and they take place on 27th and 28th. So we do a fall quarter on the 27th. Our first event is called Meet the USFC Orgs, where it's kind of more informational over all 10 of our organizations. So important facts. And on the 28th, we have our kickoff date where you can go see us table in the UU. Um, and we have food, we have performances from those of us that stroll and chant. Um, it's a really fun time. And then the rest of us, like all 10 organizations after that, they all kind of start their individual recruitment weeks and they create their own events, their own, like, you know, their whole recruitment events is set up by their respective um, recruitment chairs. And it starts with one and it varies for every single one of us. If you go to our recruitment events held by USFC on them, you can also go to our top poly or you guys have and we're going to be posting all the updates and all the events that some of our organizations are going to have. And that's the thing about recruitment. It's very individualized. Um, I definitely encourage you to push it out for, like, self Yeah, and then the Panhellenic recruitment is very different from both of the IFC and USFC orgs. Um, it's very formalized, and so you're going to each house all together, and then each night you're kind of narrowing down um, which chapters that you want to visit the next day. Um, signing up is required to participate in Panhellenic recruitment. You can sign up right now on our website, on their Instagram, um, Top Poly Panhellenic, on their website, um, and you have until September 22nd to sign up. Um, and then it takes place over two weekends. So it starts off um, September 24th and 25th, and then they get a week off, and then it continues October 1st and 2nd, and bid night is October 3rd, um, and then there's a mandatory orientation on September 23rd. So 
all three look very different. Um, all three councils have something very different to offer, but very valuable. Um, and most of our organizations will also be at Wild WOW Club Showcase this Sunday. So I highly recommend going, starting to talk to the chapters, seeing what their recruitment process is like. Our council exec boards will be there as well to help answer any general questions you have to. Thanks a lot. All right. uh, so yeah, I think there's a lot to offer. A lot of people immediately think to a lot of the more social ones, but it's really important to recognize there's also academic and uh, cultural group life. So maybe can we talk a little more about that? Yeah, so I will say that all of our orgs are social. So we don't house any of our academic organizations. So um, all 38 of our organizations are social. 10 just happen to have a cultural focus, um, which I'll have Megan talk about. Yeah. Megan, we can't really hear you. Can you try talking a little slower, maybe? I don't know now? if that's just me. Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, okay, okay. Um, I'll start off. Um, so for USMC, we, like I said, we compromise, well, we comprise of Latina sorority fraternity, Asian fraternity sororities, and we have one multicultural organization. So what that means is, yes, you might be focused in that culture, but it doesn't mean that you have to be like a Latina or Asian or like you don't have to be a part of that culture yourself. You can join whatever you like. So it's definitely not closed off. Um, so any we're very welcoming of any person backgrounds. Um, you don't have to be a certain identity to join any other organization. Um, one of our sororities is more academic focus. It's a Latina sorority, um, but all of us are social. Thank you for the uh, correction there, but uh, yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, do you guys maybe want to touch upon some of your personal stories that made Greek life something you want to stick around? I know you guys all seem like juniors and seniors, so what what does it have to offer, kind of? Yeah, I mean, I can take it away here. Um, I think I definitely offer something unique being from the East Coast. Um, I had family, uh, alumni, Cal Poly, that taught here, actually. Um, that's largely how I became familiar with the school, but uh, coming out here from Connecticut was a long ways away, and I would credit a lot of my personal growth and success to uh, Greek life in some ways. Um, you know, more than any other organization on campus, fraternities and sororities offer a group. Um, you know, right off the bat, it's much easier to transition into college when you have such a vast support system. Um, there's great leadership opportunities from your very first day joining. Um, I personally got a lot out of the human service and philanthropy side of things. Um, that's definitely been really rewarding to me and that made me want to stay around um, seeing that I could have such a positive impact on other people and you know my peers and vice versa, that people could have such a positive impact on me. Um, the social activities are awesome, scholastics and intramural sports, um, group living as well, um, coming into college without much you know knowledge of where to stay. Um, on campus housing is great, but an alternative is also um, living in your fraternity or sorority house, um, which is a great uh, solution to people coming in who don't necessarily know where to live after the dorms, which is totally understandable. Um, I would definitely credit most of my living situation um, to my fraternity involvement. Um, and it's, you know, just honestly a great way to transition into college. And it's a lot easier when you have, you know, such a vast support system. And I can definitely, um, you know, attest to that coming from the East Coast. Thank you, Shay. Okay, so I would say that my experience is similar to Shay's just because I was also born and raised in northern New Jersey, so I come all the way from the East Coast. Um, obviously, coming to college in general is such a big transition, um, but for me, obviously, I came across the country just like Shay, and I would credit a lot of my good transition to my organization. My sorority is Lenis and Gamma, and with these girls, like, they helped me, like, have a sense of community on this campus, especially of someone of my identity. I'm 
a Latina, specifically Peruvian, first gen, low income students, first time students. Um, and so for me, like it was like the biggest challenge was knowing that I would find like a sense of purpose, but also like the present on this campus. And so for me, it's like I don't know what my college career would have been like without my and much more than you know a lot of the stereotypes that's around about like like growth that you get from and obviously everything put out of it. Um, so for my that's the experience overall was just doing marketing, having like that place to grow and also just having support my um, at all times doing everything that I take on, which what I credit a lot to be with, like being president of this council. Um, another thing that I took from my, from my council overall is my skill for leadership, my skill for getting more into like the professionalism that we have. So I've been obviously how to work with people better, how to work with conflict better. I'm not perfect on it. Um, but I feel like within FSL, but also within this, we have to learn how to work with people better, how I can plan better, how I can work with better, how, you know, we're going to work with people every single day in a past college. Like, it's like an important life skill. And I feel like I put a lot of my skills that I have to professionally to my organization, but also to the public. Yeah, I think you two said it perfectly. I, again, I'm not a student, so I'm not going to speak on, I can't speak on my student experience here, but I will say working with um, all the students that I've worked with over the last three years and then having been a member myself way back in the day, um, it really ha like enriched my own college experience. I was able to gain a lot of leadership experience, um, networking skills, um, help with my academics. And honestly, it's just, it creates a sense of belonging on campus um right away when you join or even if you join your second or third year i think it helps create a sense of home um on campus where it could feel scary you know there's like twenty thousand people or some or more here at Cal poly so this creates kind of a smaller environment um and really a community where we all care about each other and look out for each other and that's something that i'm really proud of as well well thank you I have said it better myself. I think it's amazing when everyone comes together, spending their time and getting their finances and just their passion. You can come together in a big group that really makes a difference to your college experience. But uh, do you guys have any favorite events you've had in the past due to their uh, big organizations that you want to talk about? Um, yeah, I can lead it off again here. Uh, last year we had um, the IFC Battle of the Bands. So that was with the, the Interfraternity Council as a whole. Um, I would say that was my favorite event I've been a part of. Um, we got to raise a good bit of money and most importantly, awareness um, for NAMI SLO, which is the National Alliance on Mental Illness in SLO. Um, it was an awesome event. We had some bands come out, play live music, um, raise money for charity through selling tickets and we sold food. Um, we had pretty much every fraternity on campus uh, collaborate for this, um, you know, people helping out where they could. Um, it was awesome to see, see us all come together for such a good cause. Um, it was awesome to see that our community could so directly benefit um, a local charity here in San Luis Obispo. I would say that's my favorite event that I was a part of. So, so for me, I would say that one of my favorite events for us, obviously in the past year, we do, I do want to acknowledge that we do have smaller numbers than Panhellenic and IFC, so we can, well, we can, but it's like having like larger scale events is more typical for us, but I guess for me, one of the events that's one of my favorite was our USC weekend event that happened in winter quarter of last year, and I would say it's one of my favorite because it was one of our biggest coming back from COVID events and it's just like we all got to see each other and the new members that we've all been having and it's just obviously COVID's just the biggest change out of just in life in general currently and for us it was just a good moment to like socialize with another we went to like you know it was like a volleyball course and then like a potluck afterwards it was more it created like that sense of community once again but also like 
humanizing every single one of us rather than being like behind like a screen or behind letters I just feel like it's always good to be within our community and like socialize interact with one another um and I feel like that was one of the bigger events which I want to continue this upcoming quarter in terms of our intra-council community or relations um just getting to know each other more and familiarizing ourselves more um, especially on this campus being a PWI Um, I guess from an office standpoint, I really enjoyed putting on the standards of excellence banquet um, that we have to celebrate all the hard work that all of our organizations do at the end of the year. We give out awards like new member of the year, president of the year, member of the year in general. Um, and it's just awesome to get everyone together and just celebrate everything that we've done. Um, on not an office standpoint, I am always really impressed at the different philanthropy events and community service events that our organizations put on. They're so creative and so fun and they get the community together. So that's just one of my favorite things too. Thanks a lot. Uh, I'm thinking we can maybe do some reminders or some dates, maybe when to show up, like which you show out to in your perspective um, member. Um, before we get specific with like where you should be and what time, um, follow every single Instagram account that we have is my number one advice. So follow CPFSL, follow Cal Poly IFC, Cal Poly Panhellenic, and um, Cal Poly USFC. That's where all of the information is going to be. The rush times, the event times, the flyers, everything is going to be there. And you can sign, it's mandatory to sign up for IFC. IFC recruitment too and Panhellenic and those sign up forms are there um, and my one piece of advice is to just keep an open mind um, and be yourself like really be your true authentic self we have 38 organizations um, and you don't need to just focus on one because you're bound to find um, your place if you really keep an open mind but I'll let the other two talk about where they should show up and when okay I'll start I can send the app real quick again at Cal Poly underscore USFC. Um, so for us, our first event is week two of fall quarter, the 27th, it's a Tuesday at 7 p.m. And once again, that's more of like our informational over all of our organizations. And we call them informational because in that sense, we're going to be having representatives from every organization. Um, Sweet. Thanks, Megan. Um, so for the IFC, um, to reiterate, Elizabeth, uh, it's really important to just check uh, Instagram and follow everything and sign up. Uh, sign ups are mandatory uh, to echo there. But um, to repeat the dates, um, Interfraternity Council Rush Week is October 5th through the 11th. Um, the mandatory information session is October 2nd. Um, the service event that's open to PNMs is October 3rd. And the uh, Rush Week kickoff barbecue is October 4th. Um, for individual chapters, um, I would check their Instagram and follow them. Um, individual chapters will post information pertaining to their chapter, but um, there will also be updates on. The dates we have, those are also available on greeklife.calpoly.edu backslash IFC backslash recruitment. Um, but yeah, those are our important dates. Um, and I would check again, individual chapters, Instagrams for specific times for their events. Thanks for that. I think, uh, yeah, Instagrams couldn't have said it better. Uh, a lot of these organizations work on rush videos. So definitely check those out because those do a pretty good job normally of kind of capturing what these organizations are about. But do you guys have any, maybe some tips uh, for talking about? Q&A's. 
Um, Chips as in, you know, in, in terms of recruitment or? Yeah, recruitment tips, what to watch out for, maybe what to look forward to uh, for last week. Yeah, I mean, just off the bat, I would say to, again, echo Elizabeth um, with all 38 organizations, there's a place for anyone. So, you know, um, it can be daunting meeting new people and we can often, um, you know, try to fit in. But I would say the best way to fit in is to stand out and be yourself. Um, there is a place for everyone, you know, um, go with your gut. I would say my personal tip is go where you feel the most at home. Um, you're going to find multiple places that feel like a fit. Um, but the place that just feels, you know, the most at home to you as an individual um, is what I would recommend. And I would say to look forward to Rush as a whole. Um, I really love our IFC barbecue. Um, I think that's a day that a lot of people look back on uh, with fond memories. Um, but, you know, I would say to hit the ground running and get out there and, uh, you know, meet some people and make some friends. Shay said it perfectly. I also think all you really need for our recruitment events is go in there with an open mind. Be yourself. We're not looking for a tip. Like none of our organizations, all 10 or all 38, right, can, isn't like looking for one certain individual or one person who's just like a certain personality or whatever. It's just be yourself. Come open minded. Just talk to everybody and anybody. Like you're going to find your place. You know, like in, like, we have a place for everybody. So, honestly, it's just come and have fun. Just be yourself. Talk. Get to know people. Yeah, I echo what both of them have said. Um, if you're even thinking about it, like, I don't know, maybe I would say just go through any of the recruitments because altogether we probably have about 2,000 people that go through all three of our recruitments each year and so you're bound to meet someone even if even if you realize that FSL isn't for you you're still going to meet two three fifty friends so that's a bonus right there um and then I also want to just address some commonly asked questions that I got a lot in slow days that I feel like people are probably going to want to know um one we do not require um like we don't have a live on requirement as a first year student, you are still, can you hear me? Okay, as a first year student, you're still gonna live in the residence halls um, and all of, our, all of our houses that have housing on campus can't fit everyone. So it's typically like a first come first serve situation. Um, dues, all of our chapters have some sort of chapter dues that they have to pay each quarter. This is a aspect of all of our organizations. So I always encourage people to ask about them. It's not a taboo topic because everyone has to do it. And so it's really important that you need to know what you're paying for um, before you accept a bid or get join an organization. So don't be afraid to talk about that. Um, and then time commitment is also a really popular question. I say as a new member or as an active member, it's anywhere between like two to five hours a week, depending on what is going on that week. Um, baseline, you'll probably have one chapter meeting a week and then maybe one new member meeting. Again, it varies per um, chapter and per council, but you really, it, it's very doable. A lot of our students are also involved in whole leadership positions in um, other organizations. They have multiple jobs off campus and on campus. So um, it's definitely doable. Well, uh, thank you. I mean, I know for me, I look forward to going to a lot of the events. Uh, so it just makes it that much better. It makes it less of a chore. So uh, I think we'll look to the chat maybe for any frequently asked questions or get, get to see if there's anybody that has any questions in the chat. Uh, maybe we can sign off here. You guys are okay with that. Yeah. Um, really quick, what chapter are you in? Uh, Delta Chi. Oh, nice. Okay. Awesome. You guys want to shout out your organization? So uh, drop the at at Cal Poly Delta Chi. Still have our ass footage. <laughs> yeah, I'm a member of uh, Phi Kappa Psi. And I'm a sister of Lemus and McGemma Sorority Incorporated. And I, well, I guess am because it's forever, but I was a Chi Omega, but not at Cal Poly. Um, if you all have any other questions, 
please email greeklife at calpoly.edu. We can answer them. You can also DM them. Dane, do you see any questions? I don't see any questions. I don't know. I don't see any. I think uh, you guys did a great job addressing any possible questions uh, that students have. But then again, you can email them. Feel free. But it's been really nice talking to you guys and getting to know you a little bit and uh, learning about Greek life. So. Uh, awesome. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. Bye. Bye now. Hey there, my name is Rafael. I'm a fourth year journalism transfer student with a minor in Spanish and my pronouns are he, him, his. Thank you for watching the video. Please share any questions or comments you have down below in the comment section. Click here to subscribe and to watch more videos, click here. If you want to sign up for a campus visit, we're offering in-person and virtual options. So check out our website. Link in the description. Thank you for watching.